Okay, thank you all of you for coming to our Halloween double feature horror film. So, uh, and uh, I'm very excited. I would like to briefly, brief, briefly tell you how this event came about. Uh, let me turn off the, the light in the... Um, my wife and I, my wife is actually at the camera behind you. We are documentary filmmakers. And for the past uh, six months, we have been working on a project on Islamophobia. And uh, during our research, you know, we have been looking for experts, people who could talk about it, you know, and it's a big issue right now in, in this country as well as in Europe. And uh, so we ran into uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Haled Abu Fado, who is a scholar, he's a professor of law and Islamic law at UCLA. Uh, he's also uh, an author who wrote uh, several books, over 14 books, about uh, uh, Islam, with books that uh, very much cover so many topics, from ethics, spirituality, God, and so on. I actually, I'm in the process to reread for the third time. So much I love this book. So much I love this book. In Search of Beauty in Islam. It really touched my heart in ways that uh, I can hardly describe. For this reason, I'm very excited that uh, Dr. Anel Abu El Fadur accepted that, this invitation because uh, he's becoming one of my favorite writers. <laughs> so it's not just about uh, the, the insight he has about Islam, but it's, he writes beautifully about things that I think relate to all of us as, as a humanity, as, as, as humans. And uh, so we interviewed uh, Dr. Aleda Wulfadu several times, and you know, we start chatting after the interview, and, and uh, we, we saw that he has, he has this amazing library with over a million volumes, possibly the largest private library about Islam, Christianity, uh, Judah, you know, uh, Judaism, you name it, you know, all religions but, and, and philosophy and, and so on. And uh, it's a great kind of collection. And there's also some books about the occult. Okay, so I got very interested. <laughs> and, and we started talking, and uh, Dr. Aleda Wolfatur said, oh yes, I also watch horror movies sometimes. I said, like, well, Possibly not as many as I do, because I, you know, I actually like horror movies. I've been since I was a kid, and so on. And one day he took me upstairs in his house, which is full of books. And hopefully, you know, when like my wife and I will have completed the documentary, we will also see this amazing collection of manuscripts from, you know, the past, the present, you name it. So he took me upstairs, and I thought maybe we'll have a collection of ten horror films. No, where boxes and boxes piled up one on the other, over 600 horror films. And what he told me, which is quite amazing, and I want to take time because I want him to speak to you guys, just briefly before we start the first film, he said that, you know, he writes at night, and at around 3 o'clock, he needs a break, and he watches a horror film. So I thought that was so original, so unique. And um, I, you know, I, I, he, he told me that he was about to get rid of all this collection of films. So I asked, can we, can COC take it? So right now we have the largest collection of horror films, I think, in California. So with over 600 titles, which is larger than our collection. Uh, I, I don't know with the COC library if we, we possibly would get up to uh, over a thousand uh, films, titles, but with his, his, his donation of our DVDs, now we possibly have, I, I think, the largest collection in, in California, you know, among colleges in California. So this is the reason why eventually I said, I asked Dr. Haled Abu El Fado, would you like to, to host a, a double feature or night? And he said, yes, why not? So it's with great pleasure that I would like to introduce you to Dr. Alain Abu El Fadur. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to keep you long, although my, my wife 
still keeps uh, bugging me about uh, people uh, telling you everything about uh, why I'm so infatuated with this hard movie. So I'll, I'll try to strike a balance. Uh, first, uh, I've told you uh, the donation of the horror collection, which is very dear to my heart, is, is really a testament to uh, how fond I am of Guido and Tina. I mean, I, I've met a lot of documentary makers in, in my life, and uh, I rarely will spend more than a day with them and sort of make excuses to basically um, get them out of my life. The, um, the filmmakers are brilliant, but they also are, could be quite annoying. Uh, but uh, Guido and Tina are the one exception so far in my life. So you're very fortunate to have Guido as your professor in, in, in this school. Um, just a, a brilliant couple. And the, the reason I need to uh, get rid of my horror collection is that I'm out of space. Uh, 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 the book, the, the, my home, has been taken over by books, and there is no space to move, there's hardly space to sleep, no space to really <laughs> sit, and uh, I have to make sacrifices, and all the horror movies are very dear to my heart, I'm going to have to donate them to the common good, um, so that there will be more space for books. My, my son, who's here, who's, who works on the library, tells me you don't realize how bad the crisis is, uh, the crisis of lack of space. But let me, let me tell you something about horror movies, and especially my relationship with horror movies. Um, you know, the first question is, why horror movies? Um, I, I'll, I'll, I could answer this very quickly. Uh, for a boring person like myself, I spend uh, over 10 hours a day sitting with books, uh, reading about the good in entirely theoretical ways, or reading with conceptions of the good, or the pursuit of the good. What I like to call beauty, uh, providence, goodness. And then it, it, you and then about five or so hours, I try to write. And around two or three o'clock, I need a break where I come into contact with narratives of mythology. And mythology is not a bad word. And mythology is what humanity has anchored itself on throughout its ages. And in the modern age, where we do so much to try to deconstruct our mythologies, what we're really doing is we also deconstruct the repository of our consciousness. Now, what, what does this mean? It means that human beings without a system of belief are like ships without waters, lost. And the modern age, has done a lot to make us believe practically in nothing. And that's why I love horror movies. Now, let me tell you what I mean by horror movies. There are pornographic gore movies, uh, meaning slasher movies, bloody movies. I don't enjoy these. I think they're cheap. They're easy to make. Um, they're pointless. Uh, if you work a mall like I do, all you have to do is go to the coroner's office and you'll see a lot of gore, real life gore. And there's no genius in that. Horror movies that enrapture me are those that investigate and pursue the idea of the concept of fear our anxiety. And as someone who is often cast by society as an outsider, the other, because I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim scholar, 
And in the United States right now, as the election of Trump demonstrates, and in Europe, the Muslim is the other. Often, the anxiety producing other. But as someone in that category, when I watch horror movies, the thing that strikes me is the extent to which all human beings, Asian, Muslim, Asian, African, Caucasian, Mongolian, share the same fears. And that is a bond of commonality that is undeniable, and it's beautiful. But also, in investigating our narratives of fear, the way we conceive of what scares us, we also define the opposite, what we universally as human beings think of as good and beautiful. And this to me, in many ways, by sharing all, by, by, by being so common place in our fears, in our anxieties, we also expose the fact that we also share the same concept of good. And that's a revelation, that if you watch horror movies of all genres and all cultures, and my donation to the school is not just American horror movies, they're American, European, Asian, Turkish, some Egyptian. Egyptian horror movies are not good. <laughs> they're just not. They're Turkish are better. Um, it, it's, uh, now, if any of you are going to or think of becoming good filmmakers, um, Horror movies is only for the truly brilliant. You can watch a hundred of them and remember one. Um, there, there's so many cheap thrills, and they wear off like you know someone saying "boo" when they jump up, up from behind the door. Uh, these are not the horror movies that stay with me, and that. For me, an investigation of our, the, the repository of our human consciousness and our fears and our common good. The horror movies that reveal something about what I believe, and a world that you know, I, I spend a considerable amount of hours in, the world access to, in my case, worship, the world of the unseen. We don't live in only the physical dimension in which we live, but we live in a multi-dimensional universe. And the world of unseen is accessed either through straight means or through means that are often explored in horror movies, the so-called occult, with all its dangers and its risks and so on. If we end up showing Baskin, is Baskin yeah, sure. the second movie? I'll just say, say two words about that. I picked that movie because it's Turkish. And that was important for me, to find an example of a movie made from a Muslim culture, rather than purely Christian. There's a lot you can say about basketball. I'm just going to say... We they, may have they, some time to maybe also talk afterward, if okay. people are interested. All right, so I'll, I'll just say, uh, if you stay for the second show, the Baba Duke is, is rather famous, but if you stay for the second show, there are... Baskin reveals something that is fascinating. Western history, Western intellectual history, is interweaved with Eastern investigations of consciousness. The West built much of its investigations of consciousness on Eastern knowledge, whether the Kabbalah in Judaism or Sufism in Islam, or various methodologies of Buddhism and, and other Eastern belief systems. Or ancient Egyptians, or the Shadians, or what I'm claiming to be, the, the Chaldeans, rather, and it's been translated in English, the, 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 the mother of the, the originators of, of occult knowledges and so on. That's the, 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 the occult symbolism that are interweaved in the movie are very real. 
and they represent something that we know innately and intu intuitively, that there is a realm of consciousness that we often find much safer to anchor ourselves in our rationality and our real realism. But our rationality and our realism often leaves us alienated and lost. And so we run to mythology for comfort. That's it. Thank you very much. So, uh, just a quick uh, introduction. I choose Babadook for two reasons. First of all, because it's a very nice, it's a great story, it's a great film about a woman who is dealing with uh, a monster, if you want, a, a, a boogeyman in a closet, which is, you will see, it's very much part of her own creation. And also because the film is directed by a woman, Jennifer Kent. So, such a rarity to have a woman director, first of all. There are not so many. We just, there are an unknown quantity in Hollywood, unfortunately, because it's a very male-oriented, you know, a, a, a dominated business. But a woman who makes a horror film, I found it so fascinating, so great, and proves that, hey, women are as good as men at, at scaring people, at scaring audiences. So, uh, we start with Babadook. I'm going to start uh, uh, the film right now. It's going to take me a few seconds, but please stay also for the second one, Jacob. Back me here. Can you get this?